you meditate, you have to divide your thoughts into two types. The ones that are relevant to what you're doing right now and the ones that are not. The ones that are relevant, you want to encourage, or at least use as appropriate and then put them aside. As for the ones that are not, you do your best to take them apart. to pry them away from whatever hold they have over your mind. So you can do the work that you're working on right now. You're trying to get the mind centered. We're not trying to get immediately, at least, to the point where you're not thinking. You have to do some thinking to get the mind into stillness, like the thoughts of what your breath is how you can focus on it, where you should focus, or where you could focus if the focus right now isn't helpful. This is what directed thought and evaluation are all about. You direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you evaluate how it's going, how the breath is going, how your mind is going with the breath. And if things are not going well, you use your ingenuity to figure out how to make them go better. That's also part of evaluation. And then once you've tried something, you evaluate how it works. And if it works well, then you try to spread that benefit through the body. In other words, if there's a comfortable sensation with the breathing, say in the middle of your chest, allow that to stay there and then think of it seeping out through the rest of the body. If you push it out into the rest of the body, you destroy what you've started out with. That doesn't help. And whatever thoughts help with this process. Those are part of the meditation, too. We talk about using the imagination. It makes it sound like we're making things up. It's just, actually, you're trying to try out different ways of perceiving things to see what's most helpful. Actually, we already have our preconceived ways of perceiving things. It's like the language we grew up with. And until you learn another language, you think, well, this is just the way things are. The language fits with reality. And when you start learning another language, you begin to realize there are other ways of looking at reality. And then the question is, which, which is most helpful? Some languages are good explaining technical things. Other languages are good, good at explaining emotions or describing emotions. And the same way with the perceptions you have of the breath. Some ways of perceiving the breath are really helpful for getting the mind to settle down. Others are not. You've got to test them out. So again, that's part of the evaluation. Once you find something that really works, you stick with it until it doesn't work anymore. So there's a fair amount of thinking that goes along with getting the mind to settle down. When the thinking has done its work well, then it can fall into the background. But get used to the idea that you want to understand what you're doing here. That helps when you run into problems you haven't encountered before. John Fung used to say there are two kinds of meditators, those who think too much, those who don't think enough. The ones who think too much are the ones who tend to have trouble getting the mind to settle down, and they get discouraged when progress is slow. But if they find they can finally get the mind to become one with the breath, their concentration contains a fair amount of insight, a fair amount of discernment, because you had to figure things out in order to get the mind down, and you had to deal with different kinds of problems. So you've got that experience that you can draw on when you need it. For people who don't think enough, he said, they tend to get quiet very quickly, but then they don't know what to do on the days when the mind won't settle down. So each, each habit has its disadvantages and its advantages. 
here in the West we tend to fall into a thinking too much category, but we do have to do some thinking to get the mind quiet, some rearrangement of our understandings at least. New perceptions, new ways of thinking that make it easier to settle down and need easier to stay here. Reminding yourself the mind's going to go slipping out, looking after something else. That there's really nothing out there that's worth looking at. Something that's really worthwhile is getting the mind to really stay still, be centered right here. As for the slipping out, this is where another kind of thinking comes in useful, when you learn how to take things apart. We read about all the different lists that the Buddha has, the different ways of analyzing things. And there's a tendency to think that that's all for later stages of the practice. But actually it's helpful right here, right now, to learn how to take thoughts apart. There's a famous poet who one time said that when you analyze the image of a poem, all you get is the dust. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, trying to take these thoughts and turn them into dust by analyzing them. In other words, see where there's a feeling that goes into the thought. See where in the body you feel the thought. That's one way of circumventing it right there. You realize that for the thought to stay in the body, there'll be a little pattern of tension someplace. It might be in your wrist, it might be in your chest, it might be someplace in your head. But if you can sense that once the thought starts, there's a particular sensation in the body someplace, try to breathe through that. Look at the feeling. Look at it as a series of perceptions, the little images that the mind creates for itself. In other words, try to take it apart. It's in doing this that you can step back from it. You might want to analyze what kind of emotion is going into it. Is it sensual desire? Is it ill will, irritation, any of the hindrances? Just the fact that you can label the thought as a hindrance helps give you some distance from it. And you might want to look to see what the, the allure of the thought is. Why would you go for it? There are some thoughts that the mind just kind of churns out out of habit. They arise and they pass away and you don't seem to get much involved in them. But with others, there's something of a hook to the thought. You want to analyze, what is that? just enough so you can remove the hook and get back to the breath. So that kind of thinking helps fend off the distracting thoughts, with the purpose being that you can clear things away, get settled right back here. So there's a fair amount of thinking that goes on. And when we read about some of the more technical ways of analyzing things into form or feeling or perception or fabrication, or into the different hindrances, it's not just theoretical stuff. These are tools. For on the one hand, taking apart unskillful things, and for encouraging skillful things. like a state of concentration or stronger mindfulness. They give you a framework for understanding what's going on so that you can handle it in a proper way to help get the mind more solidly established, to see things more clearly. This is why it's good to read a little bit up and what the Buddha has to say about hindrances or factors for awakening. They give you a framework. This is what the establishment of or the establishing of mindfulness is all about. It gives you a framework for looking at what's happening and figuring out what you should do. It's not just for labeling and dropping. 
Some things you want to encourage, some things you just want to watch, other things you want to get rid of. And these frameworks help you take things apart so you can see what needs to be encouraged, what needs to be dropped. And as you get a more intuitive sense for this, then it gets easier and easier to get the mind to settle down, to stay there. And the thinking can fall into the background. You become one with your object. That's where the thinking is meant to lead. So if you find your analysis of things is carrying you further and further away, okay, you, you've been hoodwinked. The part of the mind that wants to think has learned some of the Dharma language too. So watch out for that. Think just enough for the job at hand. And that way your sense of gravity, your center of gravity, gets more solidly established right here. 